Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the Grand Hotel in Malahide for what is the seventh meeting of the Citizens' Assembly. Um, I would like to welcome all of you joining us online, uh, Falsha, and um, the, the observers present, Falsha as well. And of course, uh, I welcome all of the members again, although I've had a little chat with them earlier. Um, uh, today, we meet again to continue our consideration of the second topic on our work programme, the challenges and opportunities of an ageing population. When we met last in June, we heard from a number of experts about long-term care and facilitating independent living in Ireland. We also heard from a number of individuals um, firsthand about their personal experience of care and being a carer. And I'm sure you all remember those um, uh, experiences. Um, following the last week's deliberations, I was struck, as, sure, as I am sure the members were, by the fact that responding to the support and care needs of an older population is a complex and challenging topic. Um, I just want to say something about the recommendations of the Assembly on this topic. Um, tomorrow, the Assembly will vote to make its full suite of recommendations in relation to long-term care and also on the topics before us today, uh, pensions, income and retirement. Um, this week's meeting is timely, as I'm sure you all noticed during the week. Um, just this week, the Central Statistics Office published their third thematic report of the Census 2016 results, an age profile of Ireland, which gives further evidence that the population is ageing. It is a cause for great celebration that the age cohort of 65 years and over saw the largest increase in population since the 2011 Census, rising from, and I'll give you the figures, um, rising by, rather, uh, 102,174. That was over five years uh, to 637,567. And that uh, was a, an increase, and I'm sure you, you, you saw it in the newspapers, um, that was an increase of 19.1%. Um, the Department of Health has also uh, launched its public consultation on home care services, which runs until the end of August. And again, I'm sure you noticed that um, in the newspapers and on television. And Minister, the Minister of State, Daly, Mr. Daly, was on, I think, uh, the 6 o'clock news on Thursday. So bear those uh, two things in mind. The implications of the shifting demographics highlighted in the CSO data are multifaceted. Over the course of the Assembly's meeting in June, and again during today's proceedings, we will address some of those opportunities and challenges. Um, I believe we will be in a strong position to provide the Houses of the Oireachtas with some meaningful recommendations while contributing to the discourse in Ireland. Um, now, I want to say something about this this weekend. Um, today, we will focus our attention on pensions, income, and creating opportunities in retirement. Uh, we have a very full programme, and you're all conscious of that, I'm sure, uh, with eight speakers in total. And I'll just briefly um, outline what we're going to hear today. Um, the work uh, programme has been, as usual, devised based on me member feedback at the, uh, the June meeting of the Assembly. Now, at the outset, I want to express my sincere gratitude to all of the speakers for accepting the invitations to speak, and it was at short notice, um, particularly in consideration of the fact that, that we're, in, we're coming into the holiday period. And I would also, in particular, like to express my gratitude to each of them for presenting us with the presentation or the paper um, so that we had an opportunity to consider it uh, during last week. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm very, very grateful. Um, so just what you're going to hear this morning, first of all, you're going to hear from Andrew Nugent, who's Head of Policy at the Pensions Authority of Ireland. Um, he will provide us with an overview of pension provision in Ireland, which will include an outline of the state pension system 
and also the private pension system. Uh, we'll then hear from Dr. Michal Collins, Assistant Professor of Social Policy in University College Dublin, who will address the Assembly on income for older people in Ireland. His presentation will examine the income of older people and within this will look at issues of poverty, deprivation and wealth. Dr. Collins will also look at the state pension, assessing the importance to uh, pensioner income, uh, assessing its importance to pensioner income and its adequacy. The presentation will also look at current and future challenges for public policy and policy formation in this area. We will then hear from uh, Alan Barrett, Director at the Economic and Social Research Institute about the implications of pensions and retirement policy for the wider economy and society. He will be looking at the sustainability of pensions and the impact of extended working lives um, on the economy and society. Um, our final speaker before lunch will be Professor Liam Delaney, who is AIB Chair of Behavioural Economics in University College Dublin. He will examine ways to encourage pension participation and how other countries have taken steps to implement policies which change individual behaviour in this area. After lunch, we will hear from Dustin Moran, who is Head of Ad Advocacy at Age Action Ireland. He will provide uh, us with some perspectives from civil society on this topic, focusing on two main areas, adequate income for older people and mandatory retirement. Uh, we will then be joined by Emily Logan, Chief Commissioner of the Irish Human Rights and Equality Commission, who will um, address the Assembly on human rights and equality considerations with respect to pensions, income and retirement. Our final two speakers for the day are uh, Christine McGarrigal, Research Director uh, from the Irish Longitudinal Study on Ageing, TILDA, and Ita Mangan, Chairperson um, of Age and Opportunity. Um, uh, Ms McGarrigal will provide evidence from the most recently published wave of TILDA data on the contribution of older adults to their families and communities. And then um, you will remember Ita Mangan from uh, our inaugural meeting in Dublin Castle last October. Uh, she's here again um, to give us a perspective from civil society outlining the contribution of uh, the, the contribution that older people make based on her experience as Chair of Age and Opportunity, and also as Chair of the Citizens Information Board. Now, that's today. It's a it's a, a long day, um, and um, it'll involve a lot of concentration. But I think it will be a very, very worthwhile exercise. Tomorrow, our work programme will be dedicated to discussions on the ballot paper, and will comprise several steps. First, agreeing on the issues to be included in the ballot then agreeing on the precise wording of the questions on the ballot, and then finally, most importantly, voting. <coughs> Each question on the draft ballot paper will be the subject to discussion, including private roundtable discussions, and then uh, a public questions and answer session uh, to examine the draft and to facilitate any changes suggested and agreed by the members and the chair. And. Um, I, I, I just want to say, I, we, we, I've mentioned it already, I think, maybe at the private session, we have a member, we, two members of the expert advisory group here today, Patricia rickard clark and Susan Cliff, and Eamon O'Shea will be joining us tomorrow. So we will have their assistance, and I'm very, very grateful to them uh, for, for attending. Um, the members were provided with a draft ballot paper earlier this week. Uh, to ensure that everyone is as familiar as possible with its contents. And I'm looking forward to um, a robust discussion on the draft ballot paper. As was the case with the Eighth Amendment, we've put an awful lot of effort into the ballot paper. It, 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 it's a very, very difficult process coming up with uh, what we think is an appropriate draft ballot paper, but we'll be relying um, on your contributions uh, to finalise it. And uh, so that's really all I want to say about this weekend. And um, I, I will now ask uh, Andrew Nugent from the Pensions Authority to tell us about pensions. Thank you very much.